Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning back in. Today we're going to continue with our series of five things that you need to know about forage species to help you catch more bass. And today we're going to talk about the most prevalent forage species in the country and probably the number one forage species for the majority of game fish in our lakes. And that's the threadfin shad. The threadfin shad, guys, has been introduced throughout the country and, you know, grows to be a couple inches long. They reproduce at a fast rate and they've been put into a lot of different bodies just for the specific purpose of being a forage species. And you need to understand what they're doing in the water to allow you to track those game fish that are chasing those threadfin shad. So the first thing that you need to know is that they are a pelagic fish. And what that means is they have no home base. They basically are a constant roaming fish. And they'll be in schools and moving in schools, but they're always moving. So you need to understand that just because you locate them one day does not mean that they're gonna be there another day. They may not be there in, you know, in an hour. Uh, and the fish that are feeding on those shad are usually doing one of two things. They're either waiting at a, uh, at a specific location to ambush as shad swim by. So they could be sitting, say, at a dock or by a log or a stump and a school of shad swims by, they ambush them. Or you have fish uh, that basically become pelagic as well and just follow along with those shad wherever the shad go. And that's where you get like, you know, a lot of times you find spotted bass that are, you know, hovering over a hundred feet of water, just following bait around. And that's all they do. They just pick off shad here and there. They get hungry, they swim into the school and they grab a few. So you need to understand that the shad are a constant moving species. <clears throat> and as I stated before, they have been stocked into lots of different lakes. And that's the second thing that you need to understand. And that's that they are everywhere. So pretty much guys, if you're watching this video, uh, you're gonna, you're probably going to encounter shad at some point here or there. Now, the one thing I will say is that they only live in water temperatures that are above the low 40 degree range. So that leads me to the third thing. The third thing is if you do live in, an, in a region that has cold water, you will get shad die offs. So when I say that the threadfin shad live everywhere, if they can't live in water temperature that's below 42, you won't find them. So the northern regions of our country do not have threadfin shad, uh, or at least a lot of the lakes do not. So they're not very common at all here in Wisconsin. There are some in the Mississippi River, uh, but most, most landlocked lakes do not have any shad in them. Um, but for the most part, the majority of the country has them. And when you live in a region where you get water temperatures that drop to that 42 degree mark, that's when you'll experience what they call shad die-offs. And those shad die-offs can present really good fishing opportunities, but generally create tough fishing because you get mass die-offs, which make really easy feeding opportunities for the game fish that are eating them. And that's when you need to switch over your baits to mimic a dying shed, like throwing a jerk bait um, or other, other baits that just represent the dying shed. <clears throat> so you need to be aware that when you get into that 42, 43 degree range, you're gonna start experiencing pretty severe shad die-offs, which need to uh, alter the presentations that you are using to chase bass. So that's the third thing. The fourth thing has to do with the shad spawn. The shad spawn, the threadfin shad spawn, provides one of the greatest opportunities to fish for bass in a small window. So the shad spawn takes place in the, in the spring months, usually around May-ish. Uh, it really has to do with water temperature. So once that water temperature gets into the upper 60s, into the 70 degree mark, you'll get mass amounts of shad that flood to the bank to spawn. And that spawning usually will occur around hard objects or uh, submerged vegetation because the, the shad will lay their eggs and those eggs will stick to you know the, the weed stalk or it'll stick to a boat or a dock post 
so they like to spawn around hard objects or submergent vegetation. The, uh, the key with that shad spawn is when you have mass amounts of shad now that have moved into these areas, that provides really good fishing opportunity for bass. And that's when you want to utilize a shad style bait, like a spinner bait or a swim jig. Those work great. But with the shad spawn, what you also need to realize is that that takes place during the night. It does not occur uh, during the high sun period. So you want to, excuse me, you want to get out early in the morning or fish at night because that's when the shad spawn's occurring. That's when you get the most activity from game fish that are feeding on the shad. So that's the fourth thing. I also want to point out that uh, you don't hear about it talk much, but Threadfin shad will occasionally spawn again in the fall, uh, usually in the October time period. So it's something to pay attention to, and it's another reason why in the fall, your, your spinner baits, your swim jigs, your topwater baits, they work really well. Uh, it, so it's something to keep in mind. You may see a shad spawn, a threadfin shad spawn taking place in the fall periods as well. <clears throat> the last important fact, the fifth fact, about threadfin shad that you need to be familiar with has to do with what they feed on. So they feed on plankton. And uh, the plankton, a lot of which is phytoplankton, uh, is all based on sunlight. And the plankton in the water will rise during low light periods because it's trying to get as much sunlight as possible. So once that plankton rises in the water, which occurs usually uh, in the uh, late evening and early morning periods because it's trying to get that sunlight that's coming or leaving, I should say, <clears throat> that will rise the plankton. And because of that, the shad, which feed on the plankton, also rise to the surface, uh, which makes, you know, that's kind of like their peak feeding period. But it also means that you want to alter your baits again to... Uh, mimic the shad that are now on the surface. That's when your top water baits work really well. Uh, you just want to make sure you're fishing in the upper level of the water column. And, and all of that has to do with, you know, the, the forage species or the forage of the threadfin shad. So if the forage for the shad rises in the water, the shad rise in the water, and the bass feeding on the shad rise in the water. <clears throat> so guys, that was five facts that will help you catch more bass or whatever other game fish that you're chasing because chances are they feed on threadfin shad as well. Uh, so I hope that was helpful. If it was, share it on your social media pages, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, we have new tips and tricks that come out every day. Thanks for watching.